할렐루야 오케이 오케이 Can you hear? Is it on? Okay. Hallelujah. Why don't we... Uh, did you read the scripture already? Not yet. Okay. So we're going to read the scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. This is a word of the Lord. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Uh, one verse. It says, Philippians, uh, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1. It says, Imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we are so thankful for this 14th celebration of Children of Light Church. Thank you for so many children doing a play and worship and celebrating this birthday. God, God, we know that you are here because there is so much joy in this place. Jesus, we know you are here because there is so much light in this place. When there is light of Jesus, there is no darkness. Our hearts are full of light and full of life. Thank you so much for keeping us as a church for the last 14 years. We want to be more like you, Jesus. Help us to learn to imitate you. We want to be more like you, Jesus. Help us to think like you, live like you, and act like you. So the children of Light Church will become children of God Church. So the members of the children of Light Church will act like Jesus. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> I was so happy to uh, witness this wonderful display. The drama that you put on with the children of darkness and children of light, the black t-shirt and white t-shirt was fantastic. Because the Cambodian young people learn the gospel and now they are displaying it through the little act. And before that, there was a gift giving to the church, and that was very moving also. 
hay môn ca sầm đáy nó vẫn tích riêng miền ca to chun ca non cả đồ nhiều mặt phai trong chấm nốm cô bắt quan chất chấm này because 14 years is a very long time And I think I celebrate your 10th anniversary four years ago, so it's been almost four or five years of journeying this church uh, together. In the Bible, usually one generation is either 30 years or 40 years. So 14 years means almost half of a generation. I saw a little kid, maybe one year old, with a t-shirt that said to live as live 14 years as a children of light, and I was laughing. <laughs> This little boy has faith. <laughs> so, so, so when that little boy becomes actually 15 years old, this church will be 30 years old. It will represent a whole generation. Last 14 years, Lord has been doing a wonderful work in your life. For last 14 years, you have been changing. There was a wise man crossing the river with his disciples. And the wise man told the disciples, you know that we could never cross the same river twice. So the disciple said, of course, sir, because the river always changes. The wise man said, of course, river changes. But as much as river changes, you change because you constantly change you can never cross the same river twice so change is a constant thing there is a Korean proverb that says in 10 years The nation changes. In 10 years, the mountain changes. In 10 years, the river changes. So everything changes. I was so happy to see your video presentation of last 14 years. Something that I noticed is that the change of your face. Something, some of you look so, so much younger 14 years ago. And some of you have become looking like Ajashi and Ajuma. 
còn tay mà to lại lớn đấy nét khác tôi chia pu ông để ai to ta này mà was so cute and like what happened ba cà phê đọc buôn xa mốt lơ tới chút chút mà lại But, but it's okay. We change. So don't try to not change because change is inevitable. And when change happens, God is going to give you different direction. Some of you within 10 years will be at different location. Because with change, the direction change. And that is not a bad thing. Because we are journeying together in Christ together now. But because our Lord will lead you different ways that direction may change. We may go different direction, but our destination is always same. Our destination is kingdom of God in heaven and we'll be with the Lord when we all pass. So don't worry about God changing the direction in your life. Be faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ. Because within Christ, there is a people that we're going to meet for a reason. Sometimes God will bring certain people in your life for a reason. Maybe it's like going to hospital, you need someone to heal you. You go to hospital because there's a reason why you need to go to hospital. So there are people in your life that you meet that because God wants you to have a reason to meet that person. And there, are, and there are people that you meet because of a season in your life. All of you went to high school and you had a class with your high school students, friends. There was a season of high school in your life. Some of, you, some of you went to college and then you spent some time in college. There's a season in which that you spend time. You met certain friends in high school, you met certain people in college because there was a season in your life. So thank God that God sent you those friends during that season in your life. 
bông bông tao nói kia xô ở bờ kênh bờ chim chả chấm bùa cá đại trung ban bờ tiếc là dương ban chuột mực khẹt thành ngon đủ but that does not mean that those people should stay with you for rest of your life cá đại chuột này mình men biên đại thai dương tay tay chấm đái pe chỉ muối quát chuột quát bên muối chỉ được bao nhiêu lần because there are certain people that you meet and then they will stay with you for rest of your life miên bông bông khác đại dương chuột hay run nơi chỉ muối kia bên muối chỉ được bao nhiêu Good, good, good example is your spouse, your husband, your wife. You don't meet your spouse for a reason. You don't meet your husband for a season. When you marry, it's for life. When you have children, it's for life. You cannot divorce your children. I got three grown-up children. Thirty-seven, I tell them, you know, I cannot divorce you. I want to, but I cannot. Because it's people that God gave for the lifetime. And there are people like that in your life. Be faithful to them. Love them. Respect them. Honor them. Because there are not that many people like that. I'm so happy that you're honoring your spiritual leader after 14 years, and that's a beautiful thing. And some of you, God will call to do different things in different places and different world, and you need to move on. And that's okay because God gives new direction. But be always thankful. Have the attitude of gratefulness. Honor them. Love them. And keep the relationship. I had such relationship almost 30 years ago. Thirty years ago, I planned my first church in America. It was church like this. It was church full of young people. I was thirty years old. I planned a church with twenty-year-olds. It was college students. And I was so happy to plant a church, and there were so many young college students come to my church. And then 20 years later, Lord. Burdened my heart to go to Cambodia. So we start living in Cambodia. So the church plant that I done, the members, we have to go to different direction. Not everybody is called to Cambodia. 
There was a couple in my church 30 years ago, young couple. They loved us and they believed in us, and we started running the race together. We met for a reason of church plant. And we continue our season of church plan together. But when church season was over, James will be so faithful and we would always meet at least once a year, we'll have a lunch or dinner together. So one time in our life we used to meet every week, every week, worship together. But after God called me to Cambodia, we could only meet once a year. And usually it was during Christmas. We'll have a wonderful big meal and then we will share about what God did every year at, at Christmas time. But, but this time in July, last month, Lord starts speaking to me about having meal with James and Susan, that couple. So we had lunch together in July. And it was so good to see them because for 30 years we've been friends. Thirty years ago, I married them. Now he has four children. They're all grown, and first daughter was getting married. Their first daughter was going to get married August 5th. I was so happy because we are in Cambodia in August. So we give them the gift and we celebrate, we pray for them. But last week I got an email. August 3rd, two days before his daughter's married, he had a heart attack and died. James? We did not plan for James to die. But when we serve the Lord, we don't know why God does the things that He does. Jenny and I, my wife and I, we were very happy that we met them for the last time, I shared the meal, and we prayed together. Now he's in heaven. So there are people that you meet for the lifetime. Although we go different direction, our destination is always the same. 
But how, but how can you guarantee that you're going to meet your friend in heaven? Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, Imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. How do you become a Christian? You become Christian by imitating Jesus Christ. It is not enough to say that, oh, Jesus is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I love him, I love him. But are you trying to be like him? Liking somebody, loving somebody, admiring somebody is not imitating Christ. See, a lot of people that I met, in, even in the church, they said, Oh, I love Jesus. But they don't try to live like Jesus. They don't even try to imitate Christ. When I look at their life, they are just like the world. They love the world and they want to live in the world and they want to become successful and they make so much money to be happy and they act, feel, smell just like the world. And I asked them, why do you think you're a Christian? Oh, because I love Jesus. I admire him. He's wonderful. But I don't want to be like him. I want to be like the world. I want to be famous. I want to be popular. I want to drive nice car. I want to live in a big house. I want to have lots of money. But I love Jesus. It does not work that way. If you want to become Christian, not only you love Jesus, you want to imitate Christ. That's what Paul saying here. I wish that Paul didn't say that here. So I could just enjoy the world and be like the world and popular in the world and, and still be Christian. But that's not what Paul said. That's not what gospel is. Because before he said that, he says, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. Disciple of Jesus asked Jesus, how can I become your disciple? 
He says, take up your cross daily and follow me. Be like me. Because I took the cross and I went and I was crucified. Take up your cross, be crucified daily and follow me. That's how you become a Christian. If we could have church like that in Cambodia, Cambodia will become a Christian nation. I pray that children of Light Church that you will produce authentic disciple of Jesus Christ. I pray that you will do more than just I love Jesus talk but then you imitate try to be like Jesus. So how do you imitate Christ? You imitate by mimic, you copy what they do, do what they do. When we think about the cross, he was on the cross and he forgave those crucifying him. First thing that you need to imitate Christ is to forgive. Forgive those people who have done wrong in your life. It's very difficult. There are people who've done some wrong things in your life. Bible says, be like Jesus, forgive them. It is that imitation itself will set you apart from the world. Because the world does not want you to forgive, but the world wants you to revenge and pay back them. I know all of us, we are hurt by somebody. But for us to imitate Christ, we have to forgive. It's not a choice. You have to. And so when we imitate Christ, even today, Think about people that who has done you wrong and said, Lord, I don't want to, but I make a decision to forgive them. Forgiveness is not feeling, it's a decision. Although you don't feel like forgiving them, you actually want them to be punished. But he said, no, that's not Jesus' way. I choose to forgive them, Lord. Amen. We're going to do it right now. Let's pray. Lord, I forgive those who have done a terrible thing to us. I don't feel like forgiving them, but Lord Jesus, you commanded us to forgive. 
tu bung kung miền ả rong mình chung auto lai tại bờ ông ban bung cuốc ở bung tu bung kung ban auto đào bung cuốc you died on the cross trong ban sốc cốt nơi lời chúa cả and forgave those who crucified you hay trong ban auto đào nẹt đại chúa cả trong so I choose to pray for the prayer of forgiveness to those who done us wrong in Jesus name Amen Hallelujah and when you forgive them and then Bible says to love them I said, no, Lord, I, I forgave them. I don't want to love them. See, love is not a feeling. Love is action. You don't have to like somebody to love them. You just not love them. You bless them, you pray for them, you show your love to them. I met this lady at the retreat. It was a young lady, but as I was praying for her, I realized something was bothering her. I said, what, what's bothering you? She said, oh, nothing's wrong with me. I have a wonderful life. Nothing's bothering me. But she was not telling the truth. So I said, no, something's bothering you. Tell me what's bothering you. She realized that I was talking about her deep secret in her. Well, then she starts sharing. When she was a junior high, a long time ago, a next door neighbor, older brother, raped her. Ever since then, she was so shamed. And she hated all the men in the world. Oh, she came to church. She was a Sunday school teacher. She loved Jesus. But she wasn't imitating Christ. So I said, I'm sorry that that happened to you a long time ago. I'm so sorry, but you need to forgive him. She, she said no she said no I will never forgive him then you cannot follow Christ so we held hands together and we prayed together asking for forgiveness and after prayer she was so relieved she said thank you so much for that prayer and then I said now the second prayer let's pray that God will bless him Let's pray that you get to see him in heaven because he repents and become Christian and you see each other eternally in heaven. She said, no, pastor, I want him to die and go to hell. 
Oh, you have not forgiven him. Let's pray that prayer of forgiveness again. We did another forgiveness prayer. We did prayer of love. We blessed him. And many years passed. I was attending another church and there was this young lady coming toward me and hugged me. I couldn't recognize her because she became a beautiful lady. And so I said, excuse me, why are you hugging me? She said, oh, pastor, I am that girl that had to forgive someone did wrong. Remember many years ago? And she gave me a card saying that, pastor, oh, now I'm getting married and this is the invitation to my marriage. Because she, what happened in junior high, that she started hating old man and then she did not want to marry. But now she wants to marry and then so I was privileged to attend her wedding. It was a beautiful wedding. To imitate Christ is to imitate in forgiving others who have done you wrong. To imitate Christ is to love your enemy. To imitate Christ is to bless your enemy. I pray that as the children of Light Church spend half of a generation, I pray that you spend next half of a generation to become more like Jesus Christ. Amen. And I pray that you continue this wonderful tradition of honoring the leaders and blessing each other. And that is just wonderful thing. Continue the good works and imitate Christ. Let us pray. Father, we are thankful for this 14th anniversary birthday celebration. I pray that these young people, as they continue, Lord, they imitate you. I pray that they will learn to forgive others. Love others. Love even enemies. That we become disciple of Jesus Christ. Lord, we don't want to look like the world and smell like the world and act like the world. We want to look like you, smell like you, act like you, Jesus. So we could actually someday tell our followers, imitate me as I imitate Christ. 
ở phút tu bông cung được ngay đang mùi ăn trót tất đón nên chúng non cầu được bông phút tu bông cung thả xuống dốc trót tam chồng vì bước xuống phôi trót tam Pray Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.